Hey YouTubers, I wanted to recognize that we're going through a pretty difficult heat wave during this summer. Where I'm at in Michigan, we're hit, hitting daytime temperatures into the mid to high 90s. Uh, nighttime temperatures are in the high 70s to 80s with really high humidity. It's pretty uncomfortable. For those of you without central air conditioning, it can be pretty brutal. I wanted to let you know that it is possible to cool your entire house with a single window air conditioner unit. And that's what this YouTube video is going to be all about. Now in my situation, I have lived in homes with central air conditioning for many years, but I just purchased, well within the last three years, a somewhat dilapidated farmhouse in northern Michigan with the intention of uh, uh, using the recreational area of northern Michigan and eventually uh, ma making this my primary home, although with the amount of renovations, I've got a pretty tight budget. I recognize that the cost to add central air conditioning ranges from around $4,500 to $7,500, depending upon how many square feet your home is. I just don't have the budget for that right now, nor am I willing to put that into it. There's other things with higher priorities. So, I recalled back uh, many, many years ago, my first home, it was around 1,200 square feet, and I was able to cool that with a single 5,000 BTU air conditioner, although this is a little different. That particular home had great insulation. This is actually a 19, late 1940s era farmhouse that had additions put on and vinyl siding put on in the late 1970s. So some of the ceilings have R19 insulation. The walls are all R11 insulation. In the original part of the house, the insulation is only R11. Now I recognize the need to add additional insulation, but I have to have some roof work done first. So I have to make do. So without willing the willingness to spend funds on a central air conditioner, I decided why not try the single air conditioner here. Now I happen to have a 5,000 BTU air conditioner available to me, but what I found was that just was not enough punch for this. So what I did find at, of all places, Sam's Club, I believe they're available in Walmart as well, was an 8,000 BTU air conditioner, uh, a window unit. Um, it's made by, I think I'm pronouncing this correctly, Medea. It's an 8,000 BTU air conditioner. It has a remote control, it's Energy Star rated, and it has Wi-Fi capabilities, which is really slick in that if you're away uh, for the day or for several hours and you forget to adjust the temperature, you can dial it up or dial it down as necessary as long as you have internet connectivity in your house and as long as you have a cell phone. So let's explore this in a little more detail. Your choice on what kind of a window air conditioner will likely be based first on the type of window that you have and then how much those windows can be opened. Now, most inexpensive air conditioners for windows are designed for double hung windows. You can utilize those for slider windows, which is what I've done here. Make sure that you measure the size of the window before going shopping. You don't want to have a situation where it will not fit. Check to make sure that the outlook outlet nearby is not over uh, overutilized. Um, in my case, this is an older home. Uh, I did have some questions uh, of whether or not the nearest out outlet would be capable of supporting it. So if you have to use an extension cord, make sure that extension cord is heavy duty and rated for an air conditioner. So for those of you with slider style windows, one of the big puzzles is always how the heck do I install an air conditioner in one of these? Well, you may be familiar with seeing a patch of a piece of old paneling or a piece of plywood looks pretty lousy. Um, it's not the kind of look that I wanted for my house. Um, so one of the first things you need to do is make sure that the window is still secure. 
and that the bracing is good enough to support the weight of the window. What I found was I could take a two piece or a two inch piece of aluminum about uh, three sixteenths of an inch thick that I purchased at a hardware store, cut it to length, and then spray paint it. In my case, I spray painted it white and put that into the grooves of the open window and against the window frame itself. So I've got the support necessary and I used metal screws through to the outside into the window frame itself and into that band of metal to provide me not only security but the assurance that the window air conditioner wasn't going to fall out or be able to be pushed in. So depending upon how your window frame is you may need to either uh, create make or purchase an outside bracket to hold the weight of the window. In my case I was able to put some filler strips underneath the air conditioner on the outside between that and the window sill to support the weight although these window units now do not weigh that much but just do whatever is practical. So the frame is screwed in um, You'll notice I don't have plywood here as a filler. I, I think that's really tacky. Um, it's not the kind of look that I wanted to have several months out of the year. So instead, I suggest that you go out and get a piece of Lexan. Now, Lexan is different than plexiglass. Two totally different products. Lexan is essentially what they make bulletproof windows out of. Although you can buy Lexan from many big box stores and many hardware stores, Oftentimes they do window repairs at those. Um, the reason why I like Lexan over plexiglass is that you can drill and you can cut Lexan far easier than plexiglass. With plexiglass, if you try and uh, drill a hole in it, in many cases, it'll just crack. Um, so it's worth the cost. Lexan costs about twice the cost of what a piece of plexiglass the same thickness is going to cost you. In this case, I found a mom and pop hardware store that repaired windows and was able to give them the dimensions. And what they do is only charge you by the square inch of whatever piece of Lexan that you use. So I think my cost for this piece was around $30. And with the cost of plywood, um, hey, that's, that's not that bad of a deal. And you still get the use of that window to look out of, which I think is terrific. Now, we're not the only ones who want to be cool on the inside. Any of the bugs around your area are going to want to get in, too. So, within your air conditioning box, you'll probably find some black or gray foam. Use that to fill up all of those gaps. And I would suggest that you actually go so far with a slider to buy an extra bag of that crushable foam to seal up all the different gaps around the window to prevent bugs from getting in, especially at nighttime when the light will attract them. So another thing that I recommend is utilizing some form of tape in order to seal up all the gaps around that piece of plexiglass and around these expandable aprons, if you will. Um, I used white because I've got white vinyl windows, but you can get tape that's colored that matches whatever you have you will have to reapply this tape from time to time as it wants to pop out or at least push it down that'll prevent bugs from getting in and it'll prevent uh, warm air from seeping in around that air conditioner so that it runs more effectively I think this roll of white tape which used to be much larger was probably about three dollars at the local hardware store now here in Michigan, we run our furnaces, gosh, it seems like nine months out of the year. So the amount of time that I'm actually running this air conditioner is a relatively short period of time, maybe on and off over just the summer months. However, when I need it, I need it, and I appreciate it being here. Um, the advantage of this method is that you can simply unscrew the metal screws, remove the plexiglass, remove the metal filler and lift the air conditioner out of the window and then utilize the window as it was designed for the balance of the year. 
The other advantage to this particular air conditioner, I'm not necessarily selling this particular brand, it's just a feature. Besides having the ability to be run on the internet and adjusting it accordingly, if you're not even in that section of the house, is um, it has an eco setting. This is an Energy Star rated air conditioner. And so I've only seen an impact of around $15 a month during the hottest periods of time. Now the air conditioner is not the only part of my solution. I also use window coverings as well as interior fans. The window coverings themselves, my mini blinds, are not real expensive. I got these from Walmart. I think they were probably only about $7 a window. I should note that I intentionally bought two different win mini blinds for this particular window, knowing full well that I was going to have an air conditioner in it. That way I can use the mini blinds all the way down and I don't have that stripe of open window. It assures me some privacy as well as allowing me to angle those mini blinds to keep the sun out in the hottest parts of the day. So use your mini blinds, close up the mini blinds which are facing the sun either in the morning, afternoon, or evening. You can still see partially out and you'll deflect a lot of solar gain which may be making your house warmer. I have a sliding glass door. Again, I've got blinds, in this case vertical blinds, installed on this sliding glass door. Again, these are not expensive blinds. I think these came from Home Depot, relatively inexpensive, do-it-yourself installation. Um, but I can close these up early in the morning when the sun comes blasting through and keep the solar gain down. Besides using mini blinds, I also have light blocking draperies. In the worst part of the day when the sun is really blasting, I close these mini blinds and I also close these drapes. Now, these are designed to make sleeping easier, and they do a very effective job of that by blocking light, but there's an insulative quality to these. By utilizing these insulating drapes, I'm blocking the sun from heating up the inside, and that's especially important in bedrooms if you're trying to cool the house with a single air conditioner. Now, backing out, you'll notice I have a ceiling fan going. Now, the ceiling fan is important. Now, I happen to find these on sale at Lowe's. These are only around $50 or $60 in the clearance area, but there's relatively inexpensive ceiling fans as well. Um, the goal here is to take the hot air at the top of the ceiling and push it down. Keeping the air moving, blowing some air out of the bedrooms allows cooler air to creep across the floor, making the bedrooms much more comfortable. Again, we only want to cool areas that need to be cooled. In this case, this is a spare bedroom that's only utilized when guests are over. Keep the doors closed. Keep the windows and the blinds closed in these rooms. And that way you're limiting the amount of square footage or cubic feet of air that you're trying to cool. Now that doesn't mean that those bedrooms can't be cool when people come over to visit. Um, what I utilize are small area fans, floor fans, just to get the cool air moving from low on the floor into those rooms. Yeah, there's a bit of a walkway inconvenience and you make everybody aware of that. But um, this is how you can cool those rooms. Again, this is a renovation in, in process. Please ignore some of the boxes and the trim work. And again, in those rooms that I'm not utilizing, I use those draperies and the mini blinds to prevent the sun from getting in and heating up the house. For those of you who are unaware and aren't super handy, you cannot just take an existing light fixture off the ceiling and install a ceiling fan. Talk to the people at your home center or hire a qualified electrician. Um, there is actually a bracket that goes between the ceiling joists that you install from the inside when replacing a light fixture on a ceiling with a ceiling fan. That prevents the um, 
the electrical box in the ceiling, which oftentimes is only attached by a couple of light duty nails from being torn free from the supports, um, the, the bracket in the ceiling between the two joists provides the stability necessary for a heavy light fixture and fan and the turbulence involved from shaking it loose. Again, if you're not comfortable with this, there's numerous videos out there on YouTube for you do-it-yourselfers or hi hire a qualified handyman or electrician to do this work for you. So an air conditioner does two things. It not only cools the inside air, but it also removes a significant amount of humidity, making the air more comfortable. Now, this is not a perfect situation. Um, this cools the air down in the main part of the house to around 74 degrees if I have things uh, set on the eco mode and have it set on automatic. However, it's far better than the high humidity 88 degrees that it happens to be this afternoon outside and makes the inside air more comfortable. Again, just to summarize, it is possible to cool down a space like 1,200 square foot home with a single air conditioner. Now in the future, I will be adding additional insulation to this home, which I presume is going to increase the efficiency of my single air conditioner. Maybe someday I might put in central air conditioning. I don't know if that's the case. Perhaps it will be, perhaps it won't be. But for those of you who are on a budget, who are suffering, this is, I hope, some instructions how you can utilize a single air conditioner to cool down your homes. Best of luck to you and stay cool.